If you made the decision to queue Arena as a caster, we want to say congrats for playing PvP on hard mode. Here's the harsh reality. Being a caster is difficult, and at lower ratings, it can feel absolutely brutal for one simple reason. Your teammates have no idea how to help you. Maybe you've watched Zaryu play his high MMR lobbies and noticed the game looks completely different. Sometimes it even looks easier, and it's not just because he's a mage. Even evokers like Waz here make Solo Shuffle look like a cakewalk. They have no problem topping damage even when there are 10,000 interrupts on the enemy team. Meanwhile, every time you play Arena, it feels like you are instantly dogpiled by melee who never let you cast a single spell. And while this is happening, your partner is off on a solo mission trying to attack the healer. It feels hopeless. Obviously, Zaryu and Waz have a huge advantage. They have partners who know how to support them. This is why climbing as a caster can feel awful, because your partners won't be there to help you out. Instead, it's up to you to play as perfect as possible, which starts by avoiding some key mistakes. Today's video will guide you through some of the pitfalls that you might be making as a caster, while teaching you some easy solutions that will make your life way less stressful. Let's start with your fundamental goal in PvP, creating space. The reason this is your objective as a caster is because if you manage to do this consistently, you will take less damage from melee, do more DPS, and more crucially, land more CC. Your ability to create and abuse distance is what defines a ranged DPS, but obviously there is a problem. Every melee in the game seems to have 10 different ways to stay on target, which makes it seem impossible to actually get distance and be a ranged DPS. This is the never-ending mobility war, and as a caster, you must operate under the assumption that you will eventually lose. If this sounds depressing, don't worry. Today, Skill Capped is your therapist. One thing you need to realize, this isn't 2006 where you could kite melee all the way across Alteric Valley. Instead, you need to be a bit more creative in building space, so let's break it down. The idea is simple. You are going to take turns trading your mobility with enemy melee. They have gap closers, which include abilities like Charge, Shadow Step, Death Grip, and Divine Steed. These are what melee use to stay on target. You have gap creators, which are things like Shimmer, Teleport, Knockbacks, and even Roots. These are your tools to create distance. But in order to create as much space as you can, you have to play a game of cat and mouse. Otherwise, you're going to get trapped. The solution is simple. You always want to be using your gap creator after melee have used their gap closers. Here, for instance, the enemy rogue has just used their second charge of Shadow Step, which means with no gap closers left, Waz is able to respond with his own gap creators to safely deal damage. Let's see what happens when this rule is broken by looking first at the melee perspective. Right away, this warrior instantly uses Heroic Leap and Charge to dive directly on top of the Warlock. That means the Warlock is now plus two on the Mobility War. But instead of using this lead to kite away with Gateway or Soulburn Teleport, they just tank all the damage and trade out Unending Resolve and Death Pact instantly, which means they are down all of the major defensives within the first interaction of the game. Now, watch Vinruki manage a nearly identical situation. Within a few seconds of this game starting, the Warrior blows Charge and Heroic Leap before popping cooldowns. But once that happens, Vinruki instantly teleports away, which creates the exact space you need as a caster DPS and lets him save major defensive CDs. Distance can be created preemptively before any mobility needs to be used. Take a look at what Vinruki does here after he lays down his port you'll notice that he instantly walks away from it. The reason for this is because if he needs to teleport, it will allow him to escape with even more space and limits the ability of melee to instantly reconnect. This distance can even be created for your partners with things like roots or knockbacks, which is what Swap C preemptively does here on the warrior, who is trying to connect to the warlock. Even though the initial root might seem trivial, it gives his team a way to gain some form of early momentum and potentially force the enemy team to burn a mobility cooldown. This doesn't mean you should only hold onto your mobility until melee have used their gap closers, because sometimes you will need to kite away in key moments, like when your healer gets CC'd. Instead, these tiny considerations when it comes to using mobility, snares, and roots make a world of difference because they open up small windows where you can actually deal damage and safely cast. Now, of course, WoW isn't fair, and some classes are better at creating distance than others. Look at this mage on the enemy team. They're basically toying with the warrior and trading one for one on mobility every time a gap closer is used. Not every caster has this luxury, but you can begin to see how valuable mobility trading is for creating space. Of course, though, you will eventually run out of mobility and will be forced to deal with melee you can't escape from. This is the most frustrating situation as a caster, since all you want to do is play the game, but now you have to deal with multiple stuns and interrupts. Fortunately, there are three solutions to this problem. Let's break things down one by one. First of all, depending on the spec you are playing, a lot of your damage might actually be tied into instant casts. Take a look at this Destro Warlock and how much damage they are able to deal to the Shaman without needing to hard cast a single spell. They manage to force Life Swap and eventually Astral Shift just by pressing instant casts. Now, of course, the fact that dampening was at 40% might have some 
something to do with this too, but it's important to remember that having melee attacking you isn't always the end of the world as long as you stay on top of your damage rotation. Keeping up on your damage using instant casts is vital since there are some matchups where there is a 0% chance you can ever kite away. Take this example, where our elemental shaman is up against a DH and DK. Do you think that they even have a chance at getting distance? Absolutely not. This means your only line of defense is your ability to counter pressure, and since there are so many interrupts, you should first lean into your instant cast options because in many cases, they will represent most of your damage anyway. It's easy to overlook the defensive value of damage, especially as a caster. Of course, it is frustrating to get attacked, but learning how to maximize damage even while under pressure is the number one way to climb. The average DPS of a Destro Warlock up to combatant ratings is 16k, but between Rival and Duelist, this jumps to 20k, which is a 25% increase in damage. Is some of this due to gear? Sure, but gear alone isn't the only explanation, because across all ratings and all classes, being able to do more damage is the key to climbing. If you're able to autopilot your rotation, everything else becomes much easier. This is why we've designed our class courses around this fundamental idea. If you want to climb, you need to know the ins and outs of your damage rotation while making it second nature. This also includes burst damage, which is vital to learn in the fast-paced Dragonflight meta. All this and more can be found at skillcap.com, where we teach you the PvP fundamentals needed to climb. We're the only service that offers a money-back guarantee if you don't gain at least 400 rating while actively using our website. We do this because our service is proven to work, and if it doesn't, you don't pay. So if you want guaranteed rating gains, click the link in the description below. Anyway, back to the video. Part of knowing your damage rotation also includes knowing your spell schools, which is vital for dealing with interrupts. Every spell in the game belongs to one or more categories of spell damage. Frostbolt, for instance, is on the Frost School only, but as a mage, you have spells in other categories, like Arcane, Fire, and even Nature. This means getting interrupted on Frostbolt still allows you to use other abilities, since the interrupt only applies to the Frost School. With the exception of Affliction Warlock and Arcane Mage, most casters have their spells spread across multiple schools, which means getting interrupted is not as punishing, since there is always something else to cast. Well, that's assuming you intentionally get interrupted on the correct spells. Chaos Bolt, for instance, is actually on five different spell schools, but the most important ones are Fire and Shadow. Fear, on the other hand, is just Shadow. This means getting kicked on Chaos Bolt prevents you from using Fear, but not the other way around. Because getting kicked on Fear only locks out the Shadow School, it means Chaos Bolt can still be casted. This is something you need to actively think about when getting trained. Instead of investing your time trying to cast spells that have multiple lockouts, you can instead just eat interrupts with one school in order to cast the other. Rank 1 players get interrupted all the time, but use the lockouts to press other globals, whether it be damage or CC. And just to be clear, we're not saying you should never juke your spells though, since some specs like Arcane Mage have very limited schools, which means you will need to fake cast even while tanking interrupts. This is especially true considering Precognition, which rewards you for fake casting and is a useful PvP talent for any spec that actually needs to hard cast. The mechanics of juking is its own topic, which we have an entire course for. But what is equally as important is knowing what spells are actually worth juking. For this, we have to think of the enemy team's perspective. They are likely looking to interrupt spells they perceive as high value, which typically means CC or hard hitting abilities. Take Cyclone for example. Most people will be more inclined to interrupt this spell over something like Wrath, despite the fact that both abilities are on the same spell school. This means if you want to proc your precognition, you're more likely to do so with Cyclone. The same is true for Polymorph and Fear. These are the casts they will generally want to kick, since CC is more of a threat compared to something like Arcane Missiles or Shadow Bolt, even though these pairs share spell schools. There are also high value damage spells worth juking, including Unstable Affliction, but what's important when fake casting is to weave in as many instant cast globals as possible. So if you are an Affliction Warlock trying to proc your precognition, you should be weaving in your instant cast dots in between your jukes so that you are getting value out of the time you spend fake casting. Managing interrupts and effectively fake casting is vital not only for your ability to deal damage, but also for your control. Here, we need to address a big myth that you've probably heard from different streamers. It's the idea that casted CC doesn't matter. This became a discussion after the patch notes for 10.1 revealed that some CC spells are getting nerfed. Some rank 1 players took to their streams and said that these nerfs are pointless because CC isn't that important. But we want to warn you that this is just another case of high level bias, mostly coming from mages. Shocking, right? The reality is that CC does matter, and finding critical moments to land control on enemy healers is critical, especially in solo shuffle, because your windows to land CC are already so limited. Here for instance, our mage has the once in a lifetime opportunity to land a sheep. They have distance from both DPS, range kicks and shadow where death are down, and even though you can't see them, the priest is in line of sight. 
but instead of capitalizing off this moment, our mage just chucks some frost bolts, which get easily out healed. If he had just CC'd the priest first, this damage could have been lethal, or at least forced bubble or trinket. This is why we started this video by saying creating distance is your number one priority, since doing so will give you more opportunities to safely deal damage, and in some cases will allow you to zone out enemy healers with casted CC. These opportunities are very rare, and you need to be quick to capitalize off of them. Being a caster is hard in Arena, especially solo shuffle. Rank 1 streamers sometimes make WoW seem easy, but that's because they've been playing the game for so long. With enough experience, sure, WoW can be easy, but sometimes it just takes a really long time. We fast tracked the entire learning experience at skillcap.com with our epic class courses that teach all of WoW's fundamentals. So if you want to learn the tips and tricks needed to climb, then take advantage of our rating gain guarantee today. We wouldn't offer this promise if our guides didn't work. Check the links in the description below to get started. Anyway guys, that wraps up today's video. Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below, and let us know what topics you would like us to cover next. As always, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.